Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Leila and on this channel I talk about personal development and my life here in Seoul, South Korea. If you are like me and you love your life or just life in general, you have a bit of ambition and you want to be the best version of yourself possible while also giving yourself grace through the process, then um, this video is for you. We're going to talk about the year ahead, 2023. I have to admit that 2022 was for me personally the best year of my life the universe and god really conspired to make things happen for me and i of course took responsibility and made things happen for myself as well as i am reviewing my 2022 and working on my first quarter for 2023 um, i asked myself the question what do you think were the habits that really helped you be successful in 2022 and i came with four things that really stood out to me things that i would like to share with you today so if you are interested in knowing how you can make your 2023 more successful and again whatever success means to you then keep on watching and i hope you would find something helpful for your journey so the first thing we're going to talk about is journaling and journaling for me when i think about like personal development tools that i've used journaling is by far one of the best and i started journaling in january 2018 so it's been years and let me tell you how that could potentially revolutionize your life so for me journaling has two purposes it has a basic purpose and a more advanced purpose and i do have my computer here with my notes so if you see me looking down that's what i'm doing so the basic purpose of journaling obviously is to record what's happening during your day and that could be mundane stuff it doesn't really matter but it allows you to keep track of what's going on and uh, just give you an overall view of the way your life is um is unfolding and also if you've been journaling for quite some time and you want to revisit a specific a day in a specific year then you can go back to your journal and wonder oh what did i do on that specific day or what did i do on my birthday at that specific year so it allows you to have some sort of a time machine and i think that's pretty cool so that would be for me the basic purpose of journaling the more advanced purpose of journaling is what I think is the most useful and the number one advanced purpose is to process your emotions. Anything that you cannot say to your best friends, to your parents or to your siblings, you can say to your journal because it is a safe space. No one is reading it. No one is watching. You can pour your heart out. So when you are uh, talking about certain situations, for example, instead of them, instead of just like saying what happened, you can also uh, tell uh, or share your emotions and your triggers and maybe not judge yourself but like wonder why did i react the way i reacted could i have done things a bit differently so it gives you time to process everything from start to finish and i feel like this is very um helpful you can also go back to previous situations and try to see how you handled those situations back then because as human beings we tend to make the same mistakes over and over again we think we've learned but sometimes we haven't especially when it comes to relationship you would realize that huh you have certain patterns and having a journal would allow you to identify those patterns and also identify triggers that you may have um, and that has been very helpful to me and at the end of the day, you are the person who knows yourself best. You are the person who experienced whatever it is that's happening. So you are most likely the best person to help yourself, if that makes sense. So um, that to me is the more advanced purpose of journaling, just processing things, talking about things, purging things and uh, trying to uh, experiment also, because if you identify a trigger, and you can then figure out, you know what, next time that happens, this is what I'm going to try and see how it comes out. And then you can journal about it or you can identify a certain pattern and ask yourself the question now, why am I doing this over and over again and go a bit deeper? Anyway, so let's go back to some tips because again, I was talking about like how you need to pour your heart out and say things that are very deeply personal. You do not want your journal to fall into the hands of people. I don't have a physical journal. That's one thing. So I would recommend you have a word document where you 
put all your thoughts in, like just basically journal on Word. And you can secure your file with a password so that even if someone stumbles upon it, they will not be able to open it. The second thing also that's very useful when it comes to having it on Word is you can easily search for things. So if you want to revisit a specific date, you can just put the date in the search and it'll come up. Or if you want to review your interaction with a specific person, then you can search the person's name in a document and everything's going to come out. And that just allows for easy access when you want to research something or a topic in your journals. So that is my first recommendation. Start journaling in 2023 if you're not doing it at the moment. Let's move on to number two. And number two is a concept that I learned from Jim Rohn, who is the godfather of personal development and one of my mentors. And that actually, that concept really changed my life. And it sounds super basic, but it is very powerful. And that is do not start your day until it is over. Okay. Do not start your day until it is over. And what it means is that basically you need to know in advance what you're going to do on a specific day. And the reason why this is important is because it's going to give you purpose and direction and, and goals and things to achieve, right? Because if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to start wasting hours and wasting days and wasting weeks and months and then wasting your life. So we don't want you to be aimless. We want you to at least have certain things to achieve. So when you think about your day, think about the things that are under your control. We're not talking about like unexpected things. Leave that to God and the universe to handle. We're just going to focus on what we can do at our level. And having a memo, aka a to-do list is going to be very helpful because if you have goals, for example, for the year or goals for the, the quarter or the month, you can break down those goals into mini tasks and those tasks can be achieved on a daily basis or maybe on a weekly basis. And those tasks can be entered into your to-do list for the day. So to give you a quick example, for example, on Sunday night, think about what it is that you want to achieve on Monday. It could be calling a certain person or doing a research and don't overwhelm yourself. It could be one, two, three, four tasks. It doesn't really matter, right? But make sure those tasks are actually in direct correlation with the things that you want to achieve and, uh, and go for it, go for it. And as you achieve those tasks, it's going to give you more confidence in your ability to have control over your life and it's going to motivate you to do more. So again, do not start your day until it is over. Do not wake up without having a clear idea of the things that you want to accomplish. And you can use apps on your phone that can list the to do things to do and, uh, and you know, keep that handy and have a visual because having a visual is also very important. Number three would be hobbies, <laughs> finding a hobby that you love that is inspiring and that is entertaining. I understood the importance of hobbies in 2022. Um, my hobby basically became my passion in 2022 and has brought me so much joy. It is unbelievable. As human being, we cannot just keep on working, 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 like work, work, no play. That is not the business. It's, it's not the kind of life that we want to have. But at the same time, you don't want to just be playing, playing, playing and not taking care of yourself in your future, right? So you have to find the right balance. When it comes to entertainment, there are two types, I believe. There's the entertainment that doesn't really bring you any value, but just distract you and take away your time and your willpower and your motivation. And these are things related to maybe, I don't know, too much drinking or too much indulgence when it comes to certain substance that can be addictive. It could be watching too much Netflix or too much TV. It could be being on certain apps that I'm not going to name and spending an immense amount of time just wasting your life away. So that kind of entertainment to take your mind off of life would not be something I would recommend. If you want to take your mind off of life or off of work or things that are too serious, then find yourself a hobby that's actually going to bring you joy, like real physical joy, and also going to bring you value. And that's going to allow you to maybe um, meet people and be in a community. Okay. So in 2023, if you don't have any hobbies, try to find a hobby, try to find something that's going to bring you joy and happiness. For me, it's dancing and uh, especially Kizomba, and that has been, you know, 
bringing me so much joy. It's insane. So my wish for 2023 is for you to find that for yourself, whatever that may be, and invest your time, invest your money as well if you feel like it's worth it, but at least have that thing to counterbalance and, um, and distract you in a positive way. Another habit that is something <laughs> I take very, very seriously, it's money related and knowing your financial situation at all time and being on top of it. Money is something I like to talk about. Money is not something I shy away from. And money is my servant. Money does whatever I tell it to do and it flows in and it flows out and I have no problem with it whatsoever. And it took me time to build that kind of relationship, but money is energy, right? And in order for your money to do things for you, you need to know where it's at and what it's doing. So I all times, I know exactly what's in my saving account, what's in my checking account, uh, what is invested in stock market or cryptocurrency. Um, I know what kind of debt I have, those student loans, I'm still waiting for this thing to happen, but oh well, we'll see. I was hoping to be like student loan debt free at the end of this year, but that's another story for another day. Um, yes, so back to the topic. It is, I believe, of the utmost importance that you know what your money is doing. If you have goals, best believe that 99% of them would require some money of some sort. Where are you going to get that money? Right? So basically, what you need to do is you need to reassess your financial situation. You need to know exactly how much money you have, how much debt you have. And once you have that foundation and you know what you're working with, then you can start setting up goals. You can uh, maybe double down on things that you're doing very well or stop things that are detrimental to your financial health. But you will not be able to move forward if you don't know where you're currently at. And I know because I've been there before that sometimes you are in a difficult financial situation and you know it and you don't want to look things um, confront things you just hope that it's going to disappear and you just don't want to look at it it's like yeah but i'm not having that credit card debt yeah but yeah yeah but at the end of the day you, you need to confront the situation in order for it to improve it's not going to improve out of thin air and um yeah i mean 2016 2017 i was just out of control man out of control until i decided i was going to take my life back <laughs> And that implied taking my financial health into consideration. So it is doable, absolutely doable. You have to want it and you have to assess your situation honestly, and then you can move forward. The other thing also, once you've done that and you have a clear picture of where you are, is moving forward, you need a budget. And I know people don't like to hear the word budget, but it is necessary. You need to know how much money come in and how much money come out. Again, it's a matter of you need the tools to make things happen. But if you don't know where you are, you don't know what you're working with. Therefore, any tools would be useless. OK, so think about implementing a budget in 2023 and see where that goes. Um, but whatever it is that you do, just know what's going on in your finances. I'm not saying improve them or do whatever, but at least for the love of God, know what is happening. And then based on what you find out, decide what's the best course of action for you. Thank you for taking your time to watch the video. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any comments, please share them and uh, like, uh, subscribe, uh, share the video with someone you think would uh, find it helpful. And uh, I personally really love talking about personal development. So in 2023, expect more content. Uh, related to that from me and uh, I hope you like it if not sorry <laughs> no I'm joking but um yeah and I think that's the last video for 2022 so I'm wishing you a healthy happy and prosperous 2023 and um thank you for watching my videos in 2022 I really appreciate it um and uh yeah, so take very good care of yourselves and I will see you. I mean, you will see me in the next video uh, next week. All right, bye.